Hello and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we will learn network architecture of LTE. This diagram shows LTE network architecture. LTE refers to long term evolution, and it is used to refer to the fourth generation 4G mobile network. In order to understand LTE network architecture, we need first to understand the difference between the control plane and the user plane. The main target of the LTE network is to connect the UE to an external network, so that the UE can send and receive data to and from this external network. Simply, the control plane is used to exchange signaling messages between the nodes. Signaling messages are used to control the data session of the UE. While the user plane is used to exchange user data between the nodes, so that the UE can send or receive user data to and from the external network. After we learned the difference between the control plane and the user plane, let's discuss network architecture of LTE. LTE network contains the access network and the core network. The access network is called Evolved UT RAN E UT RAN, and it contains the E node Bs. While the core network is called the Evolved Packet Core EPC, and it contains the MME, the SGW, the PGW, and the HSS. First. The UE connects to the E node B. The E node B provides the radio interface for the UE. And the E node B connects to the MME. MME refers to Mobility Management Entity. The MME is the entry point for the evolved packet core. It performs authentication and security. The MME authenticates the UE and performs security procedures in order to secure the messages sent and received to and from the UE. In addition, the MME tracks the location of the UE and performs admission control, which means it decides if the UE is authorized to access this network or not, and if network resources should be allocated to this UE. The MME connects to the HSS and the SGW. The HSS refers to home subscriber server. It contains a database that stores the subscription information for every user in the network, while the SGW refers to serving gateway. During session establishment, the MME will exchange signaling messages with the enode B and the SGW, and will instruct the enode B and the SGW to establish a tunnel to directly pass user plane data between each other, so that user data will move directly between the enode B and the SGW without passing by the MME. Therefore, the SGW is the first point in the evolved packet core that receives user plane data from the E node B. In turn, the SGW serves as the mobility anchor point for user data while the UE is moving between different E node Bs. Then the SGW connects to the PGW, which refers to PDN gateway. The PGW connects between the core network and the PDN. Finally, the PDN refers to public data network. It is the external network the UE connects to, if it is the internet or any other network. In summary, the nodes will use the control plane to pass signaling messages between each other. And the path of the signaling messages will be from the UE to the E node B, which provides the radio interface for the UE. Then from the E node B to the MME, which performs authentication and security and tracks the location of the UE and performs admission control. Then from the MME to the HSS, that stores subscription information for every user and the SGW which serves as mobility anchor point for user plane data. And the SGW connects to the PGW, which connects between the EPC and the PDN. While the user plane is used to pass user data sent and received between the UE and the PDN, the path of user plane data will be as following, from the UE to the E node B, then from the E node B to the SGW, and from the SGW to the PGW, then from the PGW to the PDN. Thank you and see you in the next lesson.